The Ninja Turtles arcade game became an instant classic after showing up in arcades everywhere in the 1980s. For fans and gamers alike, it was a video game masterpiece. The graphics were awesome, the levels were fun as hell, and the icing on the cake was that you and three other people could play all four turtles all at the same time. This was the coolest feature of this entire game, fighting alongside three strangers who all fought for a single purpose, to beat down old Shredhead. Of course in order to get the Shredder, you'd have to hack and slash your way through tons of foot soldiers, but getting there was half the fun. This game right here is the perfect predecessor to the first Mario game. This game right here was everything a Turtles fan could ask for. In fact, the only bad thing I could say about this game is that you died just a little too quickly. Oh yeah, the infamous shell shock. Who could forget that sound? Even dying was cool as shit. Hell, if every game was like this one, I'd be out of a job. A few months later, they decided to release a Ninja Turtles game for the Nintendo system. After such an awesome arcade game, this one was highly anticipated. But just hold the fucking phone here, because this was far from the game anyone expected. In fact, it was downright terrible. Upon starting the game, you'll find yourself walking around the city. Five seconds? It's gonna be some kind of record. Alright, let's try this again. You find yourself walking around the city, and they end up giving you this weird overhead view of the character until you go down into the sewers. But instead of this game being four players, they decided to scale it back to a one player game. And you can switch out any of the four turtles whenever you feel like it by pressing the select button. Each turtle has the exact same abilities, and there's no difference between them except their weapon. Both Donatello and Leonardo I'm end the up fucking becoming nerd. the most powerful characters since they both use long range weapons. So odds are you'll it's be sucking using fucks, them the most. It fucking sucks, it fucking sucks, it fucking blows, it's a piece of shit. Die. And I don't like it. And when you're down to just Raphael and Michael Angelo, who are both fuck. four fighters, you might as well just turn off the game right now, because it's only a matter of time before you get your ass handed back to you on a plate. Fuck! I hate this game! Pizza shit. Now let's talk about stage bosses, because this game has some real winners. You know you have a great game on your hands when the ending boss just stands in the corner while you beat the living shit out of him. But if you think that's bad, then check this out. Yes! Choose Donatello, jump on the crates to the right, and just beat him with your bow. And for some reason, he only gets hurt when he ducks down lower than he already was. What a Doesn't shameless ripoff. It kind of reminds me of this rooftop bullshit. Jump from the wrong place, and you go falling to the ground. Ugh. Oh, come on, are you kidding me? Finally! Now, some of these levels have way too many enemies to fight off. And the real shit shocker is after you kill all the bad guys and turn around, another they one magically reappear! What the fucking shit? Now I've gotta kill them all again? What were they thinking? And talking about enemies, what the fuck is up with the enemy selection in this game anyway? And another Fire one! Plants, rocket pack flyers, guys on fire. Do you ever remember seeing these guys from the cartoon? Because I sure the hell don't. Either that, or else I missed the episode where Leatherface comes to visit. I'm not sure who the hell was in charge of designing the enemies, but I'm pretty sure it might have been the same jackass who designed the levels. Damn it! And another one! What the fuck were they thinking when they placed a pizza box way down here? Now, just how the hell am I supposed to get to this in time? If I go for it, I end up dying. So what's the reason for this? What a bunch of Asperger's with a side of fries! And who the hell could forget the infamous underwater level? I guarantee that anyone who's ever played this game has been probably scarred by the painful memories of trying to I should to be doing something better level. with my time. Like First rolling dog turds in cement. Like, I gotta get away bomb. from this. I gotta get yeah, out of this room. I gotta, I gotta, bombs, I gotta, I gotta go out somewhere and do something wild. They had to make it much more challenging. 
and they made it challenging, all right. They made it. What were they thinking? Impossible. What were they thinking? They ended up filling this level with all kinds of shit: electric wires, killer plants, rotating spikes. What a crap seaweed? full of fuck platypus! God, electrical fucking seaweed. Just touch it, and you get massive. You know what's goose poop? Irate gamer. Suck. And if that wasn't enough. In this section, there's and another a one! Space for you to try and Jesus swim Christ, through. I'd rather you know, fucking game, 69 a grizzly bear while shoving King Kong up my ass. I'd rather oh, fucking I'm stand sorry. in the middle of a ring of monkeys as they pelt me to death bombs. with their own I don't anal waste. deal with this bullshit. Shit! I hate this fucking level. Piece of calabunga shit. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs>